To me, if somebody comes out and they're like, no, I don't want it. It's like, maybe I'll mirror them and like try to like dissuade or like break preoccupation. But if somebody is a jerk, I'll just be like, hey, cool, have a good day and walk yeah. out, right? Because to me, preserving my vibe and my good spirits is way more important than like trying to like see if I can squeeze a yet. Like, I, I don't care. There's yeah. plenty of yes out there. And right, the abundance mentality, the positive self, self talk, like there's, there's plenty of positive outcomes. I don't need to allocate that much time to like the negative people. Welcome everybody to the D2D podcast, the Golden Door deep dive section where we dive into the tips, tricks, and psychology of what it takes to be a Golden Door winner. We have our very first Golden Door winner guest, uh, and correct me on the pronunciation of your name. Absolutely. It's uh, Aubert L'Espérance. Aubert L'Espérance. It's sexy, yes. whatever, however you say it. Yes, of course. <laughs> well, dude. We are stoked to have you here. Uh, you know, on behalf of me and Sam, we just want to welcome you to the Golden Door community. Thank and you. And congratulate you on a huge win. Tell me about your summer. Where were you? How did it go? Let's hear your story, man. Yeah. So this summer I was in Denver, um, North Denver, uh, Colorado, and it was great. It was, uh, I mean, I'm sure we'll delve into all the details. It, it didn't quite turn out to be what I expected it would be. I mean, I, ne I didn't really have much of a plan, I guess, to do what I did. And so, um, great summer. Yeah, super stoked to be here. Yeah, so how many, how much revenue did you end up generating? Yeah, so 676,757, I think. I only, know that. I only know that because I sent you that. Just, just, a, just a rough guess. Yeah, yeah, if I were to guess. 556 accounts, a pretty high ACV, yeah. That's amazing, man. And wh how, how many years have you been knocking then? This is my second year. So second summer. Yeah. You're, this is your sophomore year. You knock. What was your original goal when you set out? Because you kind of mentioned that it wasn't necessarily what you set out to do. Yeah. Um, so, I, so I had my rookie year in 2020 actually. So a couple of years ago, I took a break off the doors, did different things. My first summer, I did 524 accounts um, over like five months. So, okay. so postseason, a little preseason. Um, I didn't honestly have much of a gold going into the summer just because I wasn't really sure. I mean, the industry's changed a lot, I feel like, since 2020. I'm, I'm Oh, a at, ton. Yeah, and I'm at Active. Yeah. And so, you know, the the service itself, the packages, the pricing, everything's super different. And so I didn't really have enough context, I felt like, to really set a goal. But my goal was like, okay, cool. If the bar is, you know, guys hitting 300K now feel kind of hot, then I'll probably, you know, shoot for at least that. But yeah, that, that evolves as, as it does during the summer. Yeah. yeah, what would you say it took for that to evolve then? Well, I think um, I, think I first really got a glimpse of like what the summer could be in late May. So that's when I had my first like big day, I guess. Yeah. So I did like 11K, I think that day. And I was like, wow, like that wasn't that crazy, right? Like yeah. I guess your mindset kind of changes once you start hitting those big numbers just because it sets a precedent and you realize like, what am I doing when I'm hitting like 4K on a day? Mm -hmm. Like why, why am I not doing that every day, right? So it kind of, I guess it like sowed a seed. Um, and then, yeah, just like started racking them up a little bit more in June. I was number one rep adaptive in June, which then kind of cemented the belief of like, okay, cool. Like we can actually like do something pretty special, you know? Yeah, you created some momentum. So I think first from what you're telling me is, you know, you had an identity shift. Yeah. You, you broke your own personal limits and then you went about to make that the standard. So I feel like that's been like a key component to most top performers. They take today's limits and make them into tomorrow standards, Yeah, which is really cool seeing like how you did initially kind of just like started out, you weren't sure exactly how many accounts you were gonna do. You were just kind of basing it off of, you know, what other guys were doing or, you know, just going with the flow. But then that flow just became you standing your ground and making those standards for yourself, which is incredible. So let's dive into what was kind of like, what was your why yeah. during the summer? 
Yeah, I mean, what was my why? It's it's so difficult, I think, to describe just because what it ended as is really not what it started with, I guess. Um, I'll give you my why after July 21st. So that's the day I decided I was going to do a Golden Door. And I wasn't like quite on pace. I think I was at like 275. No, I was at 225K, July 21st. And that's really when my why evolved. Because I think, I mean, obviously like coming into the summer, I want to do great. I want to make a lot of money. I want to like push my limits, all the standard stuff, right? Um, but after I, after I was number one in June, I kind of realized like, I actually have what it takes to be one of the best in the industry. And that actually messed with me like deeply. And we can, we can jump into that. But the first couple of weeks of July were actually pretty rough. Um, really slow start to the month because I was like, I guess I was never, I never saw myself as someone that can be number one at like anything. And I think that, I think that's common for a lot of people. Like I was never number one at anything really growing up or at any point, like I'm persistent as perseverant and all these things, but I was never number one. And so it kind of messed with me after June to be like, wow, like I gotta, I gotta do that again. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's not just going to stay magically. And so my why really became like, I'm actually like, I'm, I can be the best, right? And yeah. like, I'm, I'm the route manager, right? Like I'm in charge, this is my truck. And that changes when you have your own truck too, right? But like, just all these things started adding up where I was like, well, A, obviously getting a golden door now was the site, right? And was the yeah. standard. Um, but just also like, I guess I, I started to see myself less as like a really good rep and more as somebody that has the potential to be like an industry molding rep if that makes sense yeah and that's just such a broader and deeper why that kind of transforms i think the way you approach doors yeah and what did it really take for you to shift your identity into believing that you could be someone that was worthy of the spot of number one it took honestly and we're gonna get kind of deep but honestly depression like pretty pretty deep and, and that's something i've like dealt with kind of my whole life but um really rough in the beginning of july uh, just that the pressure of like a couple of things mounting up and I don't know how it is with like all the different, you know, uh, companies or like sectors within the industry, but like, first of all, okay, well now there's a pressure, right? Like I've, I've kind of shown my cards. Everybody knows I can be number one, like mm -hmm. most days and on the month. So it's like, okay, so now there's that pressure. There's also the pressure of like, okay, well now I have my own truck, right? And I have my own tech. And if I'm not getting on the doors at the right time, or if I'm like, not performing, then my tech's just sitting there and just like a lot of eyeballs and a lot of people kind of depending on me. Um, and for a while I was kind of crushing, to be honest, uh, where I just wasn't really like great at handling that. But to your question, right, of like, what did it take to kind of grow into that identity? I think there was a switch at one point for me where I was like, after two weeks of just kind of like getting kind of mediocre numbers for me, um, I just realized like, yeah, you can look at it that way. And like, there's all this pressure, but there's a saying, right? That pressure is a privilege. Yeah. Um, and the fact that I get to have pressure is not something that's given to everybody. And just kind of started looking at it differently and saying, okay, cool. Like that means when I approach a door and I tell somebody, yeah, my truck's here. Now that's actually like way more true, right? Cause my, truck, yeah. it's actually my truck. And when I say, Hey, if I can squeeze you in right now, that's actually true. Like I do have a spot right now. And I, and just like kind of started to shift my mentality around like, I'm actually the boss here. I'm in charge and just started looking at it in more of a positive light. And that just started to obviously change everything. And the numbers reflected that. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I mean, you see it like time and time again, where it's like truly like the way you view yourself, your internal state, it all really does dictate your external experience and everything that happens. It's like once you started viewing yourself as number one, once you started changing your perception around all these things, all of that started coming together. It's like the universe will work in your favor once you decide what it is that you want, like the alchemist says. Yeah. Uh, you know, like you said, all of a sudden those things, the, the cheesy lines that you would say start to actually be legit. Oh, this actually is my truck. 
I do have a spot right now that if you fill it, will, it it'll be a cheaper deal, which is amazing to see how it lines up like that. Um, so now let's kind of take it. Um, we have, you know, obviously newer reps that listen to this podcast and want to kind of know like the tips and tricks of, of the trade. Like let's, let's dive in first. Like what, what did your habits look like during the summer? Like what was your daily schedule like? Yeah. So I think, I mean, my schedule evolved a little bit, uh, just as things kind of fluctuated for me personally. Um, I'll say that there's a few, there's a few things I do a little bit differently. Um, I'm a super obsessive person. Like I always have been in like every area of my life, but so during the day, like I'll wake up, always work out, have to get a workout in, right? Like I just feel like that helps me get my mind straight. Um, a few key habits that I think were important is, and this is maybe done. I don't know if this really like has an actual impact, but I, so, so I fast during the day. Okay. I don't eat until evening. I feel like there's like a weird hunter mentality huh. to that where I'm like, I'm actually physically hungry. And it just like, it makes me more driven to yeah, just do stuff. Like it gives you an edge. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm physically hungry. So like when people are like, oh, I'm hungry for deals. I'm like, I'm actually hungry. <laughs> right. Like, and I think that like weirdly flips a switch in my brain where like, I just hate taking lunch. I don't like doing that. I don't know that that's super applicable to every rep everywhere in every company. That's something that helps me. Um, I think the biggest thing though, in terms of habit that, that helps me is affirmations. Yeah. And huge shout out to all the guys at the grit for that quite transparently. Um, Zach Seeger, like those episodes of their podcast that they did were huge for me and just started, um, started using affirmations every day. I think that's something that every rep should do. Um, where like after July 21st, that's actually the day I started implementing them, where I would say like, I'm gonna get a golden door. I got a golden door. I sold over $650,000 in revenue, right? Like uh, Sam Taggart awarded me a golden door in January of 2024. Like I would actually say those things yeah. over and over and over and over again, like between doors all day long out loud. Like there's ring cameras, I'm sure, where I'm like, <laughs> like kind of like whispering under my breath. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think affirmations are huge. Again, to the point of like rewiring kind of the way that you look at yourself. It feels kind of dumb at first to be like, yeah, I'm a golden door rep. And like I'm yeah. gonna sell, I, I sold 10K today. Like that, that feels, it feels out of reach. But then all of a sudden, like the way that you look at yourself and talk to yourself, your internal dialogue reflects so profoundly on your performance. So I think that's a huge habit. I'm honestly like, I'm not the biggest habit guy. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I, I try to not be superstitious in part because I have like really bad OCD. And so I try to like stay away from anything that's too ritualistic just because then I feel like I can't sell if I don't do it. So like, yeah, like the guys that like wear the same polos do like the same thing. I don't do that. Like I'll literally mm -hmm just change what I eat, I'll change what I wear, just to try and like break up the monotony. Cause I think ultimately the biggest habit you can have is self-talk and self-dialogue. Yeah. The way that you talk, talk to yourself and think about yourself is gonna impact your outcomes way more than like I think things you can check off a list, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's everything. I mean, think about the, the, the rep that's sitting in the hot sun on the curb or he's walking to the gas station what, what's he telling himself? Probably things like, I'm not very good at this. I just need a little break. Like I can give myself a little bit of time to recuperate and do these things. Like I'm, oh, I'm no good at this. Or they walk away from a door. They feel the rejection pounding on them, things like that. So I think that's a powerful nugget of, you know, sometimes we are our own biggest bullies, especially oh, yeah. on the doors because it's all happened to us before. We knock on a door. Karen comes out, we're there's a no soliciting neighborhood. You're not supposed to be here. They don't even look at you like you're a human being and you walk away and it's like, well, now I feel terrible because I'm a horrible person for bothering this lady, but that's not true at all. And it's amazing how our natural knee jerk reaction to that is to talk down on ourselves, which the key and the lesson that I'm taking away from you right now is alter that self-talk. So that way, when you kind of go into that, like you want to talk bad to yourself, use that as a springboard 
for positive affirmations. Use that as a springboard to, for self-love in order to bring about your greater cause, your why, which we were, you know, we were talking about there. So now let's kind of dive into like the rejection aspect of it. Because obviously, in order to sell as much as you had, you have to knock a lot of doors and you get sure. a lot of no's every single day. Yeah. What did you do or like what do you do to handle that level of rejection? I think to be honest, like, and it's a bit of a chicken and egg thing, but I think the reality is if you're self-talk, there's a, I think there's a few things. First of all, if your self-talk is positive enough, like it doesn't emotionally impact me at all. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's a hurdle that people have to get past. Um, there's like a lot of things mentally, like I was bullied a ton growing up. And so like, I, I guess I'm like for better or for worse, I'm kind of used to like taking crap from people. Mm -hmm. Um, that being said, like, I think, I think the way that you talk to yourself, um, there, there's, it's funny, I wish this was recorded, but there's so many times that like somebody would slam a door on me and then I'd be like, oh, this neighborhood's like, and then I'd pause, cause I'm like, is it the neighborhood or is it just the one person? And one thing I realized, and, and, and reps need to be like conscientious of, I think, is we're actually pretty bad at being um, like analytically neutral. Like we're, we're pretty bad at thinking critically about what's actually happening. Like there's so many times I get to a neighborhood, I knock 10 doors, I get like three no's, people are pissed. I'm like, oh, this neighborhood. So then I'm like, dude, it's 10 doors. It's 10 doors. Yeah. 10 doors. I knock like 200 whatever a day. Like mm -hmm. 10 doors is so immaterial. Um, but it doesn't always feel that way, right? Like, and, yeah. and by no means am I at a point where like, I don't think about rejection, but the reality is like, yeah, if I'm gonna get 10 deals in a day, or 12 deals in a day or whatever, that also means I'm gonna get like 188 or 190 no's, right? Like, yeah. So it's like, just keeping that in perspective, like I, I don't really keep a tally in my mind, but it's like, dude, like there's no pressure. And, and I think everybody needs to chill a little bit with the pressure to sell every door. Like t what you were saying earlier of if somebody's like, rude to you or a Karen gets in your face and gets in your head, I think a mistake that a lot of people, that a lot of reps make is that they allocate way too much time to people that, that are being rude to them. Yeah. Like to me, if somebody comes out and they're like, no, I don't want it. It's like, maybe I'll mirror them and like try to like dissuade or like break preoccupation. But if somebody is a jerk, I'll just be like, okay, cool. Have a good day and walk yeah. out. Right. Because to me, preserving my vibe and my good spirits is way more important than like trying to like see if I can squeeze a yet. Like I, I don't care. There's yeah. plenty of yes out there. And right, the abundance mentality, the positive self-talk, self like there's, there's plenty of positive outcomes. I don't need to allocate that much time to like the negative people. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, good friend of mine, Sean Cook, shout out, uh, taught me that principle is like, yeah, if someone's just being a dick, just walk away. Yeah. Like there's no reason that they deserve your time. They're not worthy of it. I would also add too that that cements your like positive self-belief when you're like, I deserve better than to be treated like crap. And that does not mean, and this is not a cosign for like, like be a jerk back to people. Like <laughs> yeah. just don't, it's not worth it. Like for so many reasons, but just leave. Like, yeah, you deserve better than that. And the second you walk away from a door, like not taking disrespect, it's like, okay, cool. Like I'm actually, I'm a good guy. Yeah. I'm not doing anything wrong. Like this is fine. And that just like, I feel like for me, at least it propels me into the next door way more than trying to like, banter with these people. Exactly. Yeah. And something powerful too, and, and this is what helped me a lot on the doors to, uh, to, with those Karens. I was very good at de-escalating angry people. And if, if you're listening to this, I, I have quite the baby face and a big smile. So I just look kind of like a big teddy bear on their doors when I'm smiling super big. It's like, I can't punch this kid down if, he, if he's smiling like this. But it goes to show, it's like the power of little things too the power of a smile, the power of, uh, you know, like you said, of that perception of, you know, this is 10 doors out of 200. Why do I need to pay attention to such a small percentage of people that are quote unquote mean to me or that are giving me that hard rejection when the, the good deals are out there and everyone's even experienced the no that it was a nice person behind that door either way. 
and you made a good relationship and you made a good impression. And I feel like that's like the most important part of that. So now, you know, we talked about the past summer. Um, now we can kind of go on into like what's coming up. So we got D to D con coming up sure. in January. Are you excited? Are you bringing your guys? Oh, Tell me about what's yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're what's bringing the, the plan? folks, bringing the fellas. Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, I'm stoked. I mean, I think a big pivot that happened uh, for me this year is I like, I realized this is gonna be my career for like the foreseeable future, right? I think that has an impact mentally, but it's also, I'm just stoked for like all the opportunity that's out there and um, being able to be here, right? Like those are not things I take for granted. Being able to recruit, being able to build a team, like train people, have an impact on guys, help them out um, and gals and and help them, you know, get to, to the next level in their sales. Like, I'm just, I'm stoked to embrace all of it. And I think that's something I'd also recommend for reps in general yeah. is like, look, embrace the opportunity. Like you can't, you can't make this kind of money and have this kind of like transformative impact in very many industries in this world. And so it's like, yeah, I'm just stoked to be here. Stoked to be a part of all of it. I love it. And we're so excited to have you up on that stage. Is, is this your first year at D2D Con or were you there it last is, year? Yes. No, I wasn't. Oh man. I'm well, stoked. I'm glad we got, got that change. Yeah. Now it's, um, you know, the precedence. We want you there on stage every year from here on out. I know the, the bar has been set. The bar has been set. It's not going to be lowered. You got to raise it. It's going to be raised. Yeah. Um, but anyways, man, we want to thank you so much for having you here on the podcast. Um, these nuggets have been super helpful and I, I hope helpful for everyone that's aspiring to get that golden door next year. What would you tell those people that are listening right now that they want to get a golden door? Maybe they just don't believe in themselves yet or they don't know where to start. What, what's your advice to all the future, aspiring golden door winners out there? I'd say commit, commit to it. And you don't have to, I mean, you can plaster on social media and do that whole commitment device, right? Like. To me, that's not how I operate. I just need a mental commitment to myself that I'm gonna do it. But I think like the second the second you accept, like, okay, cool, like, I don't know. And I can only speak from my own experience, but I know like mid-summer when I said, okay, cool. I'm at 225K. At this pace, I'm at like 550K on the summer. Like, if I get that, that's pretty dumb. Mm -hmm. Like if I don't push and get the golden door, like that's just dumb. So let me, like, I'll stay out as long as I need to, whatever it takes. If I have to stay out, like, regardless, I'm gonna mm -hmm. do this and we're here for good. Um, I think that mental commitment for me helped me. The second, I think the second you like make that commitment, it kind of relieves some of the pressure of like, the decision fatigue of like, oh, should I yeah. do this? Or like, am I okay with 500? Like, what's my goal? Just set set the goal if you're, if you're thinking about it, if you think you can do it and like, obviously be realistic, right? But like if you're on pace and you can do that, just go do it yeah. and have fun with it, commit to it and, and just, yeah, full send. Absolutely. Uh, it reminds me of, uh, one of something one of my mentors, Doug Cartwright taught me too. He's like, fatigue will make a coward out of anyone. You need to eliminate the decisions that you make on the doors. If you have it set as a standard that I knock at a certain time every day, I don't get off the doors till a certain time every day. I don't you know, take a long lunch or I don't do these certain things. It eliminates the process of having to decide because we've all been in that boat where we're in the car and it's like, well, I won't I. <laughs> yeah. And that back and forth is mentally exhausting. We've all gone to that no soliciting door. Will I won't I. <laughs> yeah. And again, that fatigue makes a coward out of everyone. And it's very important to solidify that. And it it reminds me of uh, a quote by a uh, Clayton Christensen, the author of How Will You Measure Your Life? And he's, he's talking about like this principle of like consistency in obedience. He's just like, my whole life has been a continuing stream of um, circumstances that I'm gonna have to compromise on basically. And it's just like, had I, if I compromise my standards once, it's just easier to do it over and over again. So the key is to eliminate the compromise, commit full in, like you said. So. Aubert, it is so good to have you on the podcast. We're so excited to see you on the golden, the, the golden Door stage this year. And everyone, this has been the Golden Door Deep Dive podcast. We'll see you next week. Thanks for having me. All right.